What's up guys, it's your boy Kool-Aid Man 100X and welcome to the Red Sea. How you guys doing? So we're going to be going over another play, but before we jump into the video, make sure you visit the ebook store that'll be in the link in the description below to get all the type of ebooks that I create first come to you. If you're interested, get the Red Sea offense. If you want updates to other things and plays and updates to ebooks, subscribe to the Patreon. I'll be in the description below as well. Uh, so we're going to learn about the gun bunch strong offset called Durham to play. The playbooks is that is going to be in the Chicago Bears, Green Bay Packers, and New York Jets. That's where you'll find this play at. So we're going to be going over Durham. Durham is going to be the play we're going to be running against. And we're going to be using, you already know, Kansas City. Let's respot the ball here. Here we go from there, guys. After we respot the ball, we're going to be going over the play. Like I always say in all my videos, when I do tip videos, I like to run the play stock to see what type of routes that I can change and what type of routes I can't change. Depending on how the play is being formed and how many blitzes coming in, how the line stay up, what I can block, what I can't block. So this would be the instance where I run the play as is and see who cannot run and who cannot throw to or whatever. If it's a good check down, not a good check down or whatever can I do. But a lot of things in the meta, which is gonna be the gun bunch that you wanna actually get used to, is to me the gun bunch is very versatile because you got the two receivers off of different routes that you can run and you got a lot of streak so pretty much your main receiver is going to be the tight end coming at this route and also this route on the right side with the wide receiver and sometimes this route here where you can get it inside go off that but i would change that route i wouldn't run this play stock and the running back route is horrible i won't run this play stock either that so the first thing we want to do is always you can put the running back on a flat. That is going to be my first instance, and I want to put R1 on a cross. That's what I want to do. Now, this is versatile. What I like to do is put square on a fade. So he actually beats off the press or any type of zone anyway. I had a fade to hit on my third read. But my first read is going to be either the tight end or also the running back. My first read is going to be the running back which is going to be triangle. My second read is going to be X. My third read is going to be R1. And my last read is going to be circle. And my other last read is going to be square. So we actually want to take that into instance or where we want to go. If we see that running back fade out, we throw in the running back automatically. That's just going to be my thing because I like to take the little yards, not the fast yards. When you run that cross, you got a nice pass up the field to have one-on-one -on -one against the safety, as you can see there. So the next thing you want to go is put the route in across, put him in a fade, uh, an out route to the right with the flat. Then we want to fade the square receiver. After we put triangle in the flat, we're going to look for X to be open, which is going to be a quick throw or a long throw, but it's depending on how you throw the ball. So if he cuts inside, he got that throw inside, he can catch it. <clears throat> try again see if you get that throw inside so we want to put him in a cross we want to put the running back in a flat and we want to put square in a fade this is going to be our first adjustment if he gets inside play on the inside but he actually played on him and they block shedding so yeah so let's try this one more time uh put our one on the cross and we're going to put him on a flat and we're going to put him on a push square in a fade so we should be able to hit that X button now since they stop block shedding inside. And he actually bumped them. You see the rocks that they get to different stuff in practice mode, but it's different in real game. <laughs> so let's try one more time. We can get past this adjustment. We'll be all right. Once again, just remember the rocks that you ran off of this too as well. So we want to put a square in the fade. We want to put R1 in the cross and we want to put the running back in the flat. Usually I like hitting the flat first, but we're trying to get this X inside so we can pass lead up. Can't do that because the linebacker want to play it all of a sudden. <laughs> so that'd be your first adjustment that you want to do anyway. So that'll be open, but my first read is going to be triangle and everything. So should be able to get it now. But the block sheds anyway. <laughs> That's annoying. But, um,. The first adjustment is going to be across, flat, fade. 
that's your first adjustment. If you want to switch this up, you can. I can't do anything because of the block shade. I can, but if I slide right, I just want to take the instance, but I will slide left in this instance. If I can get that extra hit, but he's guarding it so heavy. Oh, he caught it. Well, you pass lead up, works every time. <laughs> All right, the second read is going to be um, after you do this adjustment, which might be a fade, running back to the flat. That's your first adjustment. The next thing you want to do, if you want to make this ride a little bit more quicker to run, I would recommend putting R1 in a slant, putting circle and a drag. And this is the next adjustment that you can do because it creates a flood concept too as well. So now you got one on one with the outside. You can actually hit the runner back a little bit more quicker and it opens up X a little bit more. So that's the next thing you want to do. You want to put R1 on a slant circle on a drag running back in a flat. Okay, it's a little bit of a flood concept because it's actually open up X a little bit better. Then you have to drag for your next check down and you got triangle as your check down too and circle as your check down. The whole objective is to have check now. So you wanna be able to hit these check nows as much as you can, depending on how they guard it, how they play defense. But as you can see, I'm forcing the throw just to let you guys know I wanna make these reads because you know how y'all are. <laughs> uh, Kool-Aid, how it's gonna work? You making up this practice one, bro. This will be your second adjustment for Durham to run. This will be my second adjustment here. So when you see that, that circle will be open every time. <laughs> and you got a 96 speed you got to deal with. So depending on who you put, I always put my third wide receiver as my fastest. Quick adjustment, I will be having that in the coach ebook tips. Check that out below. Link in the description below. If you want any updates to any type of ebooks or playbooks, that'll be available on Patreon only. Get that 10 bucks a month or whatever it is. I don't know. I might make it an own thing for Madden. So because I want to take Madden a little bit more serious anyway. Oh, oh, okay. So the next adjustment that you want to do for this play is that self-explanatory. Um you can leave that route as is. You can put circle in the slant and put R1 in the drag because it's closer off the field. Then you can put him in a flat or you can block him. Totally up to you. And I like to put that receiver in a fade. For some reason, fades work better than streaks. So that's just me. I like putting my streaks in a fade. So as you can see here, we actually got Harvin running a uh, slant and we got Rice running the drag. So this actually creates another flood concept. Because now we actually got two quick throws that we can pass lead up between the two defenses and the yellows. So you can definitely take that into advantage too, going from the left side of the field. Um, so this would be the second one here. I believe the second one. So drag, flat, and square in a fade. This will be your second one. Uh, the next one that you want to do here is that you can put X and we're going to redo you know, reset the play. After you've done that adjustment, you can actually mess with this. So we're not going to actually run Durham as that route, because that route is pretty much going to be seeked out along the way. So you actually got two things that you can do with this route with the tight end and specially. Um, because you got my homes, you got that apprentice stuff anyway. So I like to put them in a post and I like to put R1 in the drag and I like to put circle and a slant. And I will have one on one with triangle here. So we ain't get into the motion, but we'll get into the motions after this. So after you put him in a post, this is how the play should look. So you have a plug concept going to the left with the running back going to the right as usual. So after the flood concept is open, this actually opened up Kelsey a little bit more. So you can actually get that flood concept on the mix. Because a lot of defense is not going to run heavy on that type of side. So you want to take that into account. So when you run that post, you can run that drag and you can run this slant. Now, a cool thing that you can do is that you can actually delay that post and actually spark route and go 10 yards up to actually spread the defense out a little bit more that you can be able to get that circle and that drag to hit in a three level concept. As you can see there, you have the flood concept going to the left. So when you do run this play, you got, you know, three different check downs that you can run. So you want to take that into account as well. So, um, you am going to run this play because they're about to blitz here. Get them out the blitz. Alright. Okay. So the cool thing about this too is that um, when you do run that post, you can do a lot of things with that post. Now the next concept that I want to show you guys is that um, 
For my instance, man, it's automatically just put the running back in the flat. Just automatically. You can put him in a flat or you got two options to put him in an out route to the left. These are the two best routes to run with the running back. The out route is kind of iffy, so you want to take that into a concept. So, yeah, be careful how you run that out route because sometimes he can be jammed at the line. So you want to take that into account as well. So the next thing you want to do is put the running back in the flat. That's just me. Um, the next thing you want to do is put a square and a slant to the right depending on how that corner on the left side plays right so you want to put um r1 in a fade and you want to put circle in a drag leave that route as is because that drag is going to carry kelsey across the field now the reason why i put square in a slant to the left is depending on how that corner plays it if that corner plays him and gets in front of him you can throw that pass instantly to get you an extra five yards or a touchdown and also if that linebacker you see that linebacker standing up on the left side if he stands up that linebacker on the left end of 79 if he stands up that means he's going to drop back in zone now if you're a good quarterback you can actually pass lead to the left or pass lead down to actually get that catch to go through you can actually force it now the reason i say you can force it is depending on how that two even two players defend that so if he doesn't use her that side, you automatically got it. If he doesn't drop back, he got inside positioning every time. That's an extra five yards. <laughs> Just like I told you. So I'm going to show you an instant replay how this play is run correctly. So as you can see here, if he plays inside and start to go for the player, this is an automatic quick throw every time. Pass lead now or pass lead to the right or left, depending on how he plays it. But if he got inside positioning on this corner, if he has inside position, that's an extra five yards instantaneous. Then you got to make, make sure uh, the wide receiver has catching in traffic. So that comes into play like the Eagles with Brown. He got catching in traffic. Now, the way he's defending now, you can still hit that depending on if he get inside positioning. Now, this comes into play when you got height and weight and all that stuff combined with that player. As you can see, Scantlin is a little bit more taller and he he'll be able to get inside position depending on how he presses if he delays your second check down is going to be this running back uh, automatically so you want to put him in a fade and you want to put circle on the slant so this will be the play here then you want to put him in a fade so if he's going there that'll be a regular play but if he plays off and you want to force it to me if that linebacker just like i said that linebacker off of 79 to the left side if he's coming in that'll be a check down if not Running back, if not the drag, you already got three check down that you can hit. So if he get inside positioning, just like that, if he get that inside position, depending on how he's pressed, it's going to be hard for you to throw it. So you have to see how he plays. If he plays off that, like if he gets jammed just like this, you can't throw it soon. You have to wait, wait for him to complete the route. If that route's not there, don't throw it because you got your check down here. With the running back here, man, just like I said, if you wait a little bit longer, if you wait a little bit longer, your second check down is coming across the field with that 96 speed, which is hard. So don't force that throw of hit, depending on how he plays it. That's a practice thing that you got to do for yourself. I wouldn't recommend it. Now, in this instance, he's playing a little bit out. So it's, <laughs> it's how you play it. I really can't explain to you is how you play it. You see him out, this will be the play here. This will be adjustment here. Then I'll put the rest of my adjustments. Here for the flat, here for the fade. <laughs> now, in this instance, that linebacker is there. You got two linebackers on the left side for the three on the left side, where I'm going to show you how you can beat a person with one receiver. That's a little bit more daunting, but it's way more explained for the Durham. So it's way more stuff you can do with Durham. Just come down to practice. So if he's playing back off like this, you have that out route. If that linebacker does not drop down on the left side, that third linebacker that's sitting, if he doesn't drop down and defend that or a user, you, you got to play every time. If he doesn't drop down, you got to play every time for a rat catch, depending on how he's defending it. So it's depending on how you get, it's a guessing game. It's like a chess match. If he's defending like this, I'm like, okay, that linebacker is more inside. So I got that slant now. The rest of adjustments here, put my flat, put my flat here and put my streak here. I already got three check downs with the running back in there. Now he's defending from the left side. So now I got inside positioning. If that linebacker does not drop, I have him. If not, I'm going not. If you want to take this play a little bit more serious, I'm just forcing the throws. But if I'm playing a person that actually defends linebackers or using linebackers well, I'm going to test your linebacker skills. So if in the instance, if he does not drop, if he drops back, I got this running back. That's just me playing regularly. <laughs> Cause I know that linebacker going to drop back in the zone. I know, I know he is, so I'm not going to force it. 
So now that I see, now that I'm making a pure read, a pure read, that ball is gone. It's, it's already gone. I already know it's not there because that linebacker dropped in that position. If he drops and I force it, that's automatic pick. So it's a guessing game. So that's something you have to practice. I would say I'm going to go more into the coaching tips about that. But uh, I would say a level of practice in that is about a good two to three hours a day, which I would say about 450 throws a day. So just just to let y'all know. <laughs> so I actually practiced for a long, long time. So. If that route's not there, that triangle is going to be. If he drops back in zone, this flag will be open every time. It'll be. It, it'll literally be open every time. You have two players that you can throw to, which is Kelsey. You can throw, but that's tightly risky because that linebacker is going to drop and try to pick it. But if he don't, that running back is going to be your second down, and you got your second check down with the drag. So that's how you can actually beat a person out of their hand with one one receiver. If you want me to go more in depth, get the coaching tips. I have a little bit more breakdown for you on how to make you can beat a person with one receiver. So I hope you enjoyed the tip. I'm out of here, guys. Deuces.